Okay, this is part two of the Richard Kane uh, lawsuit against the Department of Defense uh, filed in the state of California. And if I forgot to put the what the civil action number is so you can look this up with the uh, California court system, it is CV14, so that's Charles Victor 14. 05735. And this dog next door quit barking uh, while I uh, paused to go make some food and uh, take a little break here from part one. And the minute that I sat down to read this again, it started barking again. Coincidence? Who, who knows? Uh, it's been nonstop for going on four hours now. And I, I apologize for the noise if you can hear it, but um, it's just something I have to deal with. I can't do this really any other time. I need to do it now. Plaintiff's investigation and discoveries to date point squarely in the direction of the Department of Defense, its components, partnerships, grant recipients, defense subcontractors, and their deputized, deputized physicians and surgeons. Plaintiff's evidence also suggests that the crimes they carry have been subject to our race-based and that the electrical stimulating devices are essentially being used as tools of control, behavior modification, and to effectuate hate crimes. So uh, Mr. Kane was really going after the race thing, and uh, um, I understand that people in certain ethnic groups have been targeted, but this specific crime does not just target a specific race. Uh, there are, like I said, there are all ages, races, uh, and ages that are being affected by this. Department of Defense, its components, partnerships, grant recipients, and or its defense subcontractors at the conclusion of their experiments then conspired to document alleged strange happening or informed events in an effort to make their human research subjects, subjects appear to be mentally ill. So what he's talking about here is the street theater, the directed conversation, the auto mobbing, the uh, gaslighting, the invasion in, of your home, uh, moving things around to get you to report those incidents that have plausible den deniability um, in, so they can immediately s just tell you, because even though they know that these things are possible, they're, because they're doing them, that um, they know that if you explain this, that th these kind of things that are going on, there's cars following me, there are people talking to me that know my personal business in the store, there are... Um, there's a shoestring in my dryer that says something on it that has something to do with what I'm talking about. All these weird, strange events that happen, the street theater, the direct conversation, the auto mobbing, the, um, the, the, the all of it, the electronic harassment through your social media, um, death threats coming up. If, if you explain a lot of this stuff, they're just going to say you're crazy. But what actually is happening is you are finding out the truth and you're trying to do something about it, so they do things to you to try to put you in a position of uh, not being credible. Plaintiff began asking questions if his Sansom Clinic primary care physician, when none of the prescribed medications seemed to tame his out of control blood pressure, Soon thereafter, defendants in their cruel and unusual fashion began to punish him by commencing alleged domestic counterterrorism tactics by ratcheting up the triggering of the RF devices in an attempt to cause the plaintiff to become crazed. While adding intensive surveillance coupled with sirens of emergency service vehicles in an attempt to cause the plaintiff to have a mental breakdown. Now, if anybody else has been, experienced the gang stalking while you're out in the community, what do you, every single time, what goes by you, what, what's going on? Fire truck, an ambulance, a police car. They just happen to go code three the second that they're going by you and they happen to be not going code three when they, when they get around the corner they, or when they're starting to go around the corner. It's always, it's always police, fire, and EMS 
that have their lights and sirens on when they go by you. And like like I've said, and you've been hearing even with the, the Q post, and I said this before, uh, I even hear, heard Q say this, Q Anon, Q Anonymous, that a coincidence can only be a coincidence until it's statistically impossible. And what I've said with these instances is the timing and repetition also. So the timing and repetition, so the timing immediately when they go by you, and the repetition, how it happens over and over, it begins to be statistically impossible that this is happening at this rate. Unless you are a targeted individual, you're implanted, and they have, they have GPS trackers just like a, an Uber or a Lyft driver would have, and you have on your app that shows you when that Lyft driver, where he is. He's on his way to your house, he's gonna be 20 minutes away. When it starts getting close to your house, you can tilt pinpoint when he's pulling up to your house exactly where he's at. That's the exact same kind of software that these people are using to track you. So if they've got their phone in their hand while they're driving all day. You're driving by him. They know that you're coming up to him. That's the car. Hand signal, bright lights, all the different things they do. The, uh, uh, you know, flipping on the sirens. Oh, we've got somebody coming up on here on our, uh, on our GPS. Code three, lights and sirens. Even though there's no call, no fire, no medical aid, no kind of emergency, there's just a person that is on this list that needs to be aggravated. And this is how they're doing it. If the plaintiff had experienced a mental breakdown and informed anyone in the mental health field of such occurrences, he would have been jailed or mentally institutionalized, thus providing covert cover for the defendants and forever concealing the existence of the implanted RF devices. So that's what they're trying to do with me right now. They're trying to put me in jail so I can't keep going forward with my research and my shiny forehead uh, and, and start, a, uh, start a case on my own. They knew that I was, I was researching too much. They knew that I would be able to figure this out and the best way to stop me is to go ahead and charge me with aggravated assault, set me up into a situation that, uh, that I have to, now I have to slow down all my research and possibly go to, to prison. If I'm in prison, I can't be doing this. I'm not gonna have an iPhone, I'm not gonna have access to anything, I'm not gonna be able to file a lawsuit, I'm gonna be away in prison. And that is the tactic they're using to, to silence me. Department of Defense, its components, partnerships, grant recipients, and or its defense subcontractors, law enforcement, and intelligence agencies have been able to surveil the plaintiffs by way of the implanted RF devices since 4-4-2004. That date right there, that's my court date, 4-4. They did a lot of this stuff is, it has to do with numbers, and that's when I'm going to court, 4-4-2018. So I'm going to court on the anniversary that this uh, technology was available. The RF devices have allowed the plaintiffs to be tracked anywhere in the U.S., the world, and even inside their residence in real time. Essentially, the RF devices are capable of sending and receiving communications. Defendants have been able to hear all communications and view all public and private contacts by the way of their implanted cochlear and vis visual proce proce processes. <laughs> um, so imagine, imagine you have these in your body and they give somebody access to hear what you hear, see what you see, feel what you feel, and be able to send a signal to you to modify your behavior, to make you see blurry, to make your, your ears ring, to, to elevate your aggression, to make you feel depressed. You know, these things happen in life and and it's hard if you have this technology in your body to decipher which one is which. Is it really you? Is it, are, you know, what's going on? Why all of a sudden am I tired when I slept all night last night and I'm working now and I'm working on something important. All of a sudden I have to sleep right away or there's, there's so many examples.
You know, that dog, why is that dog barking down there? Does he have a chip in him? And he's being activated right now? I know this stuff sounds like science fiction, but this is, there's patents, there's, I mean, this person sued the Department of Defense for this. This never happens. Yeah, I know, Willis. All right, Department of Defense, its components, partnerships, partnerships, grant recipients, and or defense subcontractors abuse national security letters, NSLs, and use telephonic communications citing national security in order to obstruct plaintiff's ability to acquire medical care, removal of devices, and their right to counsel. Defendants seem to think that dismantling NSLs trump the plaintiff's constitutional rights especially where there is not a shred of evidence in their involvement in a, sing in a single crime against the intersex of the United States of America, USA, or anyone else. That was, USA was in uh, parentheses. Defendants are merely using the words national security to mask their unlawful human research and barbaric crimes which have been subjected upon the plaintiffs who are innocent law-abiding U.S. citizens. Department of Defense, its components, partnerships, grant recipients and or its defense subcontractors objectives have been clearly outlined in their research and development proposal which was prepared by the RAND National Defense Intelligence Council for the Department of Defense. So RAND has a contract with the DOD. Director of the Centri Central Intelligence Agency under contract DASW01-95-C0069. Oh, I'm sorry. That was part of the last statement there. So, Department of Defense, its components, partnerships, and recipients, and or its defense subcontractors objectives have been clearly outlined in their research and development proposal which was prepared by the RAND National Defense Intelligence Council for Department of Defense, Director of the Central Intelligence Agency for the Department of Defense and, oh, Department of Defense, Director of the Central Intelligence Agency. Okay, okay, okay. The University of California, Santa Barbara, Center for Bioengineering and Center for Nanomedicine were instrumental in the R&D proposal which has been approved by the Department of Defense. A true copy of the R&D proposal is hereto attached as Exhibit 3. Okay, I don't know if that's actually in this, but uh, so a true copy of the research and development pro proposal is attached. So that means that there's, there was a proposal from RAND to the DOD, the CIA, well CIA is under DOD, uh, for this experimental uh, program. Department of Defense, its components and partnerships, grant recipients and or its defense subcontractors and AMF developed implantable and or injectable MEMS, submillimeter and millimeter nanotechnology devices that are non-ferrous resulting in devices which on occasion may not be localized by clinical radiology, radi radiology methods. The devices are capable of recording biological data such as EEG, EMG, EKG data and are the basis for auditory, visual, and motor prosthetic technology. The devices are also capable of delivering electrical current into the biological system and, featured, and feature bi-directional wireless telemetry using federal communications Commission, the FCC, regulated spectrums. So this is going through the FCC. What? Biological system. Federal Communications Commission's regulated spectrums. The United States Defense... United States Defense Spectrum Organization oversees the development and implementation of the devices in order to protect military interests. A true copy of the 11... 30, 2011 FCC report and order which outlines the RF utilized by AMF is herein attached to Exhibit 4. 
defendant, Department of Defense, its components, partners, and its third-party subcontractors, authorized and funded by way grants the University of California, Santa Barbara, Sansom Clinic, Cottage Health System, Sansom Diabetes Research Institute, and Dignity Health, and Dignity Health. Defense Department Components, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, and the U.S. Army Medical Research and Material Command, USAMRMC, funded the campaign. The campaign. Okay, so that is who, where did my highlighter go? That's who's funding this. Highlighter disappeared. Yeah, set that down somewhere. Oh, here it is, okay. Okay, so I'm going to read that again. Defense Department Components, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, and the U.S. Army Medical Research Material Command funded the, camp the campaign. DARPA. Army. On biomedical research, which involves nanomedicine research and the development of nanotechnology devices. The monies trickled down and directly through Sansom Clinic Diabetes Research Institute to its Sansium Clinic. The, San the Sansom Clinics employ or contract with 1,200 1, physicians, staff, and scientists who represent more than 30 medical specialties and subspecialties at 23 patient care locations. Since the Cottage Health System, Dignity Health, and Sansom Clinic have monopoly on urgent care facilities and hospitals on the Central Coast, they are able to use any number of their more than 1,200 physicians to covertly implant the experimental biomedical military-grade RF controlled devices. So I lived in Central California, two hours from the coast, and um, had several surgeries in that area. copy of the defendant's published brochure with its outlines. Their partnership is here in attached Exhibit 5. Defendant, Department of Defense, its components, partners, and its third-party subcontractors authorized, funded, and conspired to implant the plaintiffs with the above-described RF devices without warrant, consent, or privilege for the, for the sole purpose of human research. Sole purpose of human research. Guinea pigs. Defendants and co-conspirators, Cottage Center for Advanced Imaging, Pueblo Radiology, Cottage Health Systems Radiology Department, and the Sansom Clinic radiologists falsified x-rays, MRIs, CT scans, and their related reports in order to conceal the existence of the government RF-controlled and powered nanotechnology devices in furtherance of the conspiracy. Defendants' scheme also involves labeling the RF devices are being lymphomas, artifacts, fatty tissue, and other medical term that will allow them to mask their illegal illegalities. So that's the plausible de deniability. They, everything they do has pl plausible deniability. And you have to come up with 83 pages of lawyer speak court papers to, uh, and, and this is amazing uh, research this guy did. I mean, this is the best thing I've seen on, the, on this in, in a year, you know, this is amazing. Plaintiffs contend that they are human research subjects by the way of good old boys network and that it is not a coincidence that Charles Peterson, MD, the chief scientist of telemedicine and advanced technology research center, TATRC, and who was the director of research, medical director, and ultimately the CEO of Sansom Clinic Medical Clinic, aka Sansom Clinic, until he became employed by Tatric. In September of 2008, Dr. Peterson's current employment with USAM RMC and Tatric is herein attached. So this Dr. Peterson was employed with the uh, U.S. Army Research Center 
And man, it's hard to keep track of all these, uh, these acronyms. Okay, defendant Tetrick performs medical reconnaissance and special operations to address critical gaps that are underpresented in DOD medical research programs. TATRC is an office of the headquarters as an office of the headquarters of the U.S. Army Medical Research and Material Command, USAMRMC, T, oh, Medical Research and Material Command, U.S. Army Medical Research and Material Command. Oh. TATRC fosters research on health informatics, telemedicine, uh, M Health, is that mental health? medical training systems, and computational biology, and promotes and manages science and engineering in other key portfolios. Through an extensive network of partners, TATRC is focused at both ends of the research spectrum, exploring models of high risk and innovative research, and putting research findings into the hands of warfighters while looking towards wider civilian utility. TATRC augments core medical research programs through special funding and partnership opportunities. TATRC is based at Fort Detrick, Maryland. What's up with you, Maryland? Funny, one of the attorneys that uh, was working for my law firm that uh, was giving me some directed conversation and, and um, some other weird stuff. Just happened to be, uh, when he called me, his number was from Bel Air, Maryland. And, uh, that's interesting to me. Everybody from Maryland. Defendant Department of Defense its components, partners, third-party subcontractors, and private corporate health care providers who contract with government agencies are not entitled to qualified, to qualified immunity. See McDuffie versus Hooper, 982, uh, cites some uh, court cases. The court held that private individual defendants did not enjoy the qualified immunity, immunity which might be available to government defendants. In this case, none of the defendants are eligible for qualified immunity. Any private entity or person who acts under color of law may be a defendant. Defendant medical facilities, physicians, surgeons, and defense attorneys engaged in conspiracy to violate the plane of civil rights under 42 U.S.C. 1983, 85, and 86 by conspiring to conceal evidence and obstruct justice. I wasn't done with that page. Why did I put that over there? Plaintiff provides the court with a prelude to a plethora of uncovered evidence in this case. Plaintiff's minor child, CAC, who was born 3-3-2006 at the Santa Barbara Cottage Hospital, underwent an x-ray of his chest on 4-3-2012. After experience, experiencing numerous episodes of alleged asthma, aka distressful breathing, the x-ray was taken at the Cottage Center for Advanced Imaging, located in the city of Santa Barbara, California. The x-ray was dictated by Defendant Daniel Gould, Gould MDR, and authenticated by Defendant Thomas C. Daughters, MD. Although the x-ray depicts several obvious MEMS, submillimeter and or millimeter nanotechnology, RF controlled and powered micro stimulators which were implanted and or injected into his body. The x-ray was deemed to be normal. Defendant Department of Defense, its components, partners, third party subcontractors and co-conspirators Dr. Gould and Dr. Daughters conspired to intentionally conceal the existence of the coded RF controlled and powered MEMS submillimeter or millimeter devices. Plaintiffs' expert witnesses have determined that several MEMS RF, RFM devices have been implanted and or injected into the body of the, of, a, of the minor child. A true copy of the minor child's 
4-3-2012 chest x-ray is here and attached at Exhibit 7. Defendant, uh, Department of Defense, its components and partners and or its third-party subcontractors, physicians and surgeons, actions and inactions were solely designed to intentionally violate the constitutional rights of plaintiffs with a primary goal of profiteering from their collection of data at the expense of plaintiffs. That's exactly what's going on with all of us. These people are profit, profiting from performing these procedures on us and then experimenting on us. There are grants written to these, these people that are experimenting and they want more and more targets to experiment on so they can grow their business. The, the violating the rights of American citizens is not a business. It's, if it is a business, currently it needs to be a business that needs to be indicted and people need to be going to prison very soon for this. The Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution protects U.S. citizens from unreasonable searches and seizures. You would think. I'm sorry. The Fourth Amendment of Uni the United States Constitution protects U.S. citizens from the unreasonable searches and seizures, unwarranted surveillance, and from being utilized as a human research subjects. As human research subjects, plaintiffs also seek redress for deprivation of, s of their civil rights, privileges, and immunities secured by the Fourth, Fifth, Eighth, and Fourteenth Amendments of the United States Constitution. Defendant. Department of Defense, its components, partners, third party subcontractors used national security letters, NSLs, as tools to intentionally intimidate, suppress, and oppress the plaintiffs in the name of national security. In order to conceal their crimes and non consensual human research experiments, with con which continue to date unabated, defendants' warrantless search and seizure of the plaintiffs' bodies gives rise to claim under Bivens v. 6 unknown named agents oh versus six unknown named agents of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics really hmm jurisdiction venue subject matter jurisdiction is conferred upon by this court pursuant pursuant to okay so this is three jurisdiction and venue Subject matter jurisdiction is conferred upon by this court pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1331, federal question, 5 U.S.C. and 702, and 5 U.S.C. and 702, 702, that's an uh, important number. In the U.S. Constitution, the action arises out of the Constitution of the United States for violations of the 4th, 5th, 8th, and 14th Amendments to the United States Constitution, for deprivation and violations of the civil rights pursuant to 42 U.S.C. Uh, 83, 85, and 86, and other provisions recited herein. Plaintiff also seeks declaratory judgment pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 2201, the Privacy Act 5, USC 552A, the Freedom of Information Act, FOIA, 5 USC 552, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, right there, FISA, finally came out in there. Okay, so plaintiff, plaintiff also seek a declaratory judgment pursuant to 28 USC 2201, the Privacy Act, 5 USC 552A, the Freedom of Information Act, FOIA. 5 U.S.C. and 552, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, otherwise known as FISA, that we've all been hearing about. U.S.C. 1801, um, E.T., I don't even know what that, E.T.S.E.Q., the Decla Declaratory Judgment Act of Act 28 U.S.C. 2201, as well as directly under the 4th, 5th, 8th, and 14th Amendments of the Constitution of the United States, with regard to those defendants sued in their individual capacities. U.S. Supreme Court, in its decision in the case of Bivens v. Six Unnamed Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI. It's got the Bureau of Narcotics and the Bureau of Federal Investigations. Okay, oh, so this is where he's stating 
all of the people that are responsible for this. Okay, so, so, so far we have the Bureau of Narcotics, the uh, FISA court, Yeah. Okay. Plaintiff's claims under 28 U.S.C. Federal Tort Claims Act were timely filed on December 6, 2013. The claims were formally denied in a letter from the United States Department of Justice Investigations Division and Office of the Inspector General on April two, uh, 2014. Letter also stated. So this guy, what he did, he made FOIA requests to every agency that you can think of uh, asking them about this surveillance and was denied any information on them, even though that we legally have the right to, uh, after uh, the, the Patriot Act, the, uh, what gives us the legal right to, uh, to make FOIA requests, and uh, I believe it's the Patriot Act. So, I mean, we have laws, but uh, those laws don't matter if they won't go by, you know, any... It's like this guy had to do all of this just to prove what was going on. And, you know, the average person has a hard time putting anything like this together. And if you need to pay for an attorney to do this, it's going to cost you a couple hundred thousand dollars, most likely, to, to do something this in-depth. To have, the, to have personal investigators, to, I mean, this guy is, this guy is genius, did this. Okay. Plaintiff's claims under 28 U.S.C. 1346 and 2671-2680 Federal Tort Claims Act were timely filed on December 6th. Claims were formally denied in a letter from the United States Department of Justice. So DOJ uh, said, no, we're not doing anything. You're, you're just a normal person. You're, you're probably crazy. Yeah, we're not doing anything to you. So the United States Department of Justice Investigations Division and Office of the Inspector General on April 2nd, 2014. The letter also stated, no, oh, the letter also stated. Hmm, maybe that didn't really finish that sentence. The court may grant relief under federal question jurisdiction. I don't know if I should read all of these uh, numbers. The Declaratory Judgment Act, 28 U.S.C. 2201, and the All Writs Act, 28 U.S.C. 1651. Venue is proper pursuant to 28 U.S.C. The plaintiffs reside in Central District and all of the events claimed herein have occurred within the, this district and venue in this court is all, also proper pursuant to 28 U.S.C. in that one or more defendants resides in this in or has its principal place of business within the Central District of California. Uh, third parties. Third parties, okay. Plaintiff Richard L. Kane, an African-American male and a U.S. citizen. Mr. Kane was born on the south side of the city of Chicago, Illinois. Illinois. He was raised in both the cities of Chicago and Three Rivers, Michigan, and graduating, I'm Three Rivers, Michigan, and graduating from the Three Rivers High School. Since graduating from high school, he has only resided in the state of California. He holds the following degrees, Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice with a minor in Pre-Law from California State University, Los Angeles 2006 LLM Masters of Laws, International Taxation and Financial Services from Thomas Jefferson School of Law in 2012. Prior to commencing law school and the Southern California Institute of Law, SCIL, in 2007. Prior to beginning law school, plaintiff over more than 14 years period worked in the human services field for licensed residential care facilities located in the state of California. He worked as a direct care staff and, and was a state certified group home administrator for juvenile offenders and adult with developmental disabilities. His last employment in residential care and prior to the commencement of being subjected to alleged domestic counterterrorism tactics was with adults with developmental disabilities. In particular, he was employed with Etta Israel Center, located in North Hollywood, California, uh, North Hollywood, California, until it was until he was laid off in 2008. The Etta Israel Center was a Jewish nonprofit organization which provided services to Jewish residents with developmental disabilities. 
after being laid off while his second year in law school, while well, in his second year in law school at SCIL, and he founded the two California corporations named Elite Attorney Services and Community Care Consultants. Both companies were based and located in Ventura County, California. Elite Attorney Services provided legal support services to law firms and the general public. Community Care Consultants provided consulting services to licensed residential care facilities, which are all regulated by the State of California Community Care Licensing. Plaintiff's Plaintiff has never been a member of the armed forces and has never consented to being a human research subject. So, um, just because we were in the military does not mean that we um, have given consent to be a research subject. Mr. Kane's grandfather, Clifton Trask, senior of Chicago, Illinois, was honorably discharged from the United States Navy. Plaintiff has never traveled abroad, possesses, possesses a passport, and has associations abroad, has never made a phone call abroad, and nor has he or his minor children conspired to commit acts against the United States of America. Plaintiff, as a result of the defendant... Okay, so it sounds like he, he read the... Uh, the criteria that will put you on the FISA watch list, uh, which having communications with uh, individuals overseas, uh, being a journalist, being a human rights activist, uh, those things will put you, can put you on under FISA surveillance. which is still illegal because we're allowed to, I mean, as Americans, to have contact with people. We're not committing any crimes. Um, you can't just be surveilled and tortured and implanted because um, you're talking to somebody. Plaintiff, as a result of the defendant, Department of Defense, its components, partners, and or its third party subcontractors, unwarranted alleged domestic counterterrorism tactics, which continues to date 24 hours as 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and unabated. Plaintiff put his goal of taking the California bar and becoming an attorney on hold for now. He has returned to working in the human services field and is currently working for a home in home supported services as a care provider for an elderly male client. Mr. Kane has cleared two Department of Justice background checks in recent months. Plaintiff, two minor male children, CAC born, uh, 3-3-2006 and CC born to 9-22-2007 are African American and of Romanian descent. Both minor children were born at Santa Barbara Cottage Hospital located in the city of Santa Barbara, California. Uh, the minor children are now ages 6 and 8. Defendant Barack H. Obama is the current President of the United States. Defendant Chuck Hagel is this, the current Security of, Secretary of Defense. Defendant John O'Brennan is currently the director of Central Intelligence Agency. Defendant Pat Brady is the is current is currently the chief of naval operations. Defendant John McHugh Mika, I'm going to say that is currently the secretary of the army. Defendant United States Central Intelligence Agency CIA is a federal intelligence agency within the meaning of U.S. of five U.S.C. 552F1. Uh, CIA is responsible for national security intelligence and covert operations. The CIA has participated in the interrogation and torture of defendants held abroad at the behest of the U.S. government. I don't know what that means. At the behest of the U.S. government. Defendant and the Alfred Mann Foundation engaged in a contractual agreement to develop sub-millimeter and millimeter sized radio frequency controlled and powered biomedical devices. Defendant United States Department of Defense is a department of the executive branch of the United States and is an agency within the meaning of 5 U.S.C. 552 F1. The DOD is responsible for coordinating and supervising all activities of government related of government relating to the U.S. Armed Forces in response to general national security concerns. Defendant funded and authorized its armed forces to the 
products, submillimeter, millimeter, and other sized nanotechnology devices during the course and scope of their duties. There's a lot here. I'm only on page 20. Uh, we're going to break this up into several parts, but this, uh, this information is important. Even though some of it's kind of redundant, uh, there's a lot in here. Let's see, what are we at right here? 40 minutes. I'm going to make these about 40 minutes. I'll finish this page. Defendant United States Army Medical Research Material Command, USAMRMC, oversees material acquisition and logistics functions as a part of the Medical Research Development and Acquisition Program. Execute strategic level med medical logistics, readiness, and other critical health care programs. Conduct operational logistics and single integrated medical logistics management in peacetime and during contingencies promote planning, modern modernization, modernization, and technology improvements as a part of life cycle management for Army medical treatment facilities and health facility programs. Defendant partnered with Defendant Sansom Clinic Cottage Health Systems and Dignity Health on the research of nanomedicine and the development of nanotechnology biomedical devices. USAMRMC funded and authorized the experiments to be performed on the plaintiffs and their medical at their medical facilities and by their physicians. Plaintiffs, expert witnesses, and investigators have traced the contractual obligation and devices back to the Department of Defense. Okay, so the Department of Defense, through the deep state, are contracting your doctors to implant you with with chips, with RFID chips, and there is a. Um, there is a letter that they write them if they're going to be involved in this, which I'm sure they get paid extra too. And what did, what did we call that letter? Uh, anyway, they, it's a uh, like a not a no compete, but a uh, what do you call it when you sign something that says you can't say anything about it? It's um, escaping my memory right now. <sighs> Defendant Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command uh, Spa War. A component of the United States Department of Navy of Def Navy and Defense is assigned with the task of command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. The Alfred Mann Foundation developed the millimeter-sized nanotechnology biomedical devices for SPA War. Defendant funded and authorized the experiments to be performed by the medical facilities and their doctors. Plaintiffs, expert witnesses, have traced devices and their frequencies back to the U.S. Navy. Navy. Come on, Navy. This isn't the whole Navy. This isn't everybody in the Navy. This is this is part of the Navy, like I was saying. This is compartmentalized, and we can't look down on the entire military because of this program. Um, it can't be that everybody in the Navy knows about this. Everybody in the Marine Corps, everybody in the Air Force, everybody in the uh, uh, Army, Coast Guard. There's there's no way. You know, I made it through 15 years of the Air Force, and I never heard anything like this at all, probably because I was one of the test subjects, but, um, you know, the people directly around me that I was working with for sure knew this, what this was. And they were pretty cocky about it, too, because they would talk a lot about what was going on and kind of laugh and giggle and smirk. And um, I knew, you know, you can kind of tell when somebody's talking behind your back, even if they're, they're not giving you any uh, specific information, they're, they're talking about you and or making references to you, suggestions towards you. And, um, you know, when they were t talking about the USAP around me, um, I just pretended like I kept working. Like I was just in, in involved in what I was doing and I didn't hear anything. But, um, you know, I heard them talking about the USAP, the Unair Un Unacknowledged Special Access Program at the 144th Fighter Wing in Fresno, California, where I was employed. So I'm going to go ahead and leave off on that. That is part two of the Richard Kane court documents. I'm going to take a little break and we will start back with part three on the next video. Thanks.